You are listening to WTUZ Radio Podcast. Welcome to WTUZ Radio Podcast. I am your host, Rhonda. Okay, family. So today's information, shout out to Sis Brooklyn Bourget. Just love that name. Uh, Shout out to Sis. She sent me some information. Child. Uh, I had to bring this to the fam. Um, She's also the, the sister that gave the information <clears throat> on the series that we're currently doing on uh, the Black nobility bloodline and rulers. Uh, so shout out to Sis Brooklyn Bourget for this information. So child, let me tell you something. This is, I'm, I pulled the original news article because uh, I wanted to validate that this was indeed what it was. So y'all can see this is coming from the News and Observer, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, UC 1898. Okay. All right. So mass meeting of white citizens of Wilmington pass resolutions. So let's get into it. I'm going to uh, get into a better version, uh, but I blew it up to make sure that it matches and it definitely matches. Now, interestingly enough, when I was pulling up, trying to find this uh, original article, the explanation that was given for this article was that some melanated men and mulatto men were trying to get with white women and white men were upset about it. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I had to go several places because the original art, the original place that gave that explanation, I tried to click on the article, this article you see here, it was in another version and I couldn't even blow it up to see what the actual article said. Um, Another article um, didn't, only hit like a little version. So I was finally able to get this version of the real article to make sure it matched what somebody else uh, printed out. Okay. Um, So I think this is out of the university... I don't know what CW means. Okay, so it's some university. Um, I'm sorry, out of North Carolina. I don't know what which university. Okay, so this is the White Declaration of Independence printed in the Raleigh News and Observer, November 10th, 1898. So again, here's the real article. Um. Uh, but, you know, I'm not trying to strain, trying to read all of that. So I'm going to read from this. So just to show you that it matches, okay, that this is a legitimate article. Let's get to it. Believing that the Constitution of the United States contemplated a government to be carried on by an enlightened people, believing that its framers did not anticipate the enfranchment of an ignorant population of African origin and believing that the men of the state of North Carolina who joined in forming the union did not contemplate for their descendants a sub a subjection to an affair inferior race. We, the undersigned citizens of the city of Wilmington and the county of New Hanover, do hereby declare that we no longer, we will no longer to be ruled and will never again be ruled by African men. Huh? What? This is 1898. Let's continue. 
This condition we have in part endured because we felt that the consequences of the war of succession were such to deprive us of the fair consideration of many of our countrymen. Now, we can only assume that this war is the civil war, right? Let's continue. We believe that after more than 30 years, this is no longer the case. The stand we now pledge ourselves to is forced upon us suddenly by a crisis, and our eyes are open to the fact that we must act now or leave our descendants to a faith too gloomy to born. While we recognize the authority of the United States and will yield to it, it if exerted, we would not for a moment believe that it is the purpose of more than 60 million of our own race to race to subject us permanently to which to a fate which no Anglo-Saxon has ever been forced to submit. We therefore believe that we represent unequivocally the sentiment of the white people of this country and city hereby for ourselves and represent them proclaim that the time has passed for the intelligent citizens of this community owning 95% of the property and paying taxes in like proportion to be ruled by Negroes, that we will not tolerate the actions of an unscrupulous white men in affiliation with the Negroes so that by the means of their votes, they can dominate the intelligence and thrifty element in our community, thus causing business to stagnate and progress to be out of the question. That the Negro has demonstrated by antagonizing our interests in every way, and especially by his ballot, that he is incapable of realizing that his interests are and should be identified with those of the community. That the progressive element in any community is the white population and that the giving of nearly all of the employment to Negro laborers has been against the best interests of this county and city and is sufficient reason why the city of Wilmington with its natural advantages has not become a city of at least 50,000 inhabitants. That we propose in the future to give the white man a large part of the employment hereto given to Negroes because we realize that white families cannot thrive here unless there are more opportunities for different members of said family. Okay, so I want y'all to remember this is 1898, right after the Civil War. Okay, um, the, that the white men expect to live in the cu uh, community peaceably, to have and provide absolute protection for his family, who shall be safe from insults for all persons whomsoever. We are prepared to treat the Negroes with justice and consideration in all matters which do not involve sacrifices of the interests of the intelligent and progressive portion of the community. But we are equally prepared now and immediately to enforce what we know to be our rights. That we have been in our desire for harmony and peace, blinded to our best interests and our rights. A climax was reached when the Negro paper of this city published an article so vile and slanderous that it would in most communities have resulted in the lynching of the editor. We deprecate lynching, but and yet there is no punishment provided by the laws adequate for this offense. We therefore owe it to the people of this community and of the city as a protection against such license in the future and that the paper known as the record cease to be published and that its editor be banished from this community. 
we demand that he leave the city, the city within 24 hours after the insurance of this proclamation. Second, that the printing press from which the record has been issued be packed and shipped from the city without delay, that we be notified within 12 hours of the exception, acceptance rather, or rejection of this demand. If it is agreed to within 12 hours, we counsel forbearance on the part of all white men. If the demand is refused or if no answer is given within the time mentioned, then the editor, Manly, will be expelled by force. It is the sense of this meeting that Mayor S.P. Wright and Chief of Police J.R. Melton, having demonstrated their utter incapacity to give the city a decent government and keep order therein, their continuous in office being a constant menace to the peace of this community, uh, ought forthright to resign. Okay. So this is the reply of the color committee to the white declaration of independence. Um, the committee of colored citizens to on honorable A.M. Waddle. Uh, so this is the Southern historical collection of the university of North Carolina library. Dear sir, we, the colored citizens to whom was referred the matter of expulsion from this community of the persons and press of A.M. Manley beg most respectfully to say that we are in no wise responsible for nor in any way endorse the obnoxious article that call forth your activities. Neither are we authorized to act for him in this manner, but in the interest of peace, we will most willingly use our influence to have your wishes carried out very respectfully, the colored, the committee of colored citizens. So here's my take on this. We, those of you that don't know, Raleigh, you, Raleigh, North Carolina used to be an all melanated city. And it was really wealthy. And so the story goes that there was a riot. Rioting went on in Raleigh where the whites rose up against the melanated people, uh, a.k.a. blacks. So this, uh, coming across this article blew me back, Okay. Now, it's either two folds, one or two things. This is yet again proof that melanated people were in the position of power and white people weren't in position of power. And during the mid 18th century, I said specifically after the Civil War, white people start coming into power and they're what they, because remember, white people were also on indentured servant contracts, aka slaves. Okay? So this lines up with them saying, uh, listen here, partner, I don't want to lie up, up in, on, on the article. They said they, they've been ruled for how many years? Uh, 30 years that they would never be ruled again by an ignorant population of African origin. This is pretty loaded, family. So this either proves the case that white people were in power. I'm sorry, not white people. Melanated people, black people were in power. 
and white people weren't, and white people started coming into power, I said at the earliest, the mid-1800s, really the late 1800s, and this is right on par, late 1800s. Or the second scenario is after the Civil War, you know, when they had that Reconstruction era, when the U.S. government set up all of those melanated men in the Continental Congress, Yeah, that part, that there was a shakeup still where white people felt that those melanated Continental Congress were getting over, okay? So it's one or two things, but either way it goes, the story that they're telling you about the Civil War, about slavery, we keep digging up stuff showing you that that's, it's not what they told you. Okay? And here, uh, number four, white people saying, wait a minute, you're giving the, all the jobs, you're giving nearly all of the employment to Negro laborers, and it has been against the best interests of this county and city. And it's the reason why Wilmington, so in this case, they're talking about Wilmington, but I'm telling y'all, there was an uprising in Raleigh. Why the city of Wilmington hasn't grown. So in other words, these melanated rulers are messing up the business of commerce. That we propose in the future to give the white men a large portion of employment here to given to Negroes. Because we realize that white families cannot thrive here unless there are more opportunities for the different members of said family. Now, does that sound like to you? <sighs> A black population being oppressed? Or does that fit the narrative of the receipts we've been giving you that there was a certain elite black population that was in charge that was getting all the benefits. And the slaves slash prisoners of war slash convicts that was kicked out of Europe slash indentured servants were the ones subjugated under these this black rulership. Okay? All right. So I'm going to try to find what was written in these uh, this uh, particular article that pissed these white men off. And I guess that was the last straw. So we're going to see how that rolls. And if I can't find it, I'm going to end it here. Because I, I, I should have thought about that beforehand. So let me try to look for the original article that set them off in the first place. I hope I can find it. But I know that's going to be rough. <sighs> Child, let me see. Okay, family, I'm back. Ciao. Let's get into it, baby, baby. Sis Brooklyn Bourgie. Oh, my goodness. Sus. The, uh, ciao. Let's get into it. 
So this here is just giving you a little more insight. The day after elections, the victorious white Democrats took the next steps in the campaign to end black rule, to end black rule in Wilmington. Remember, this is 1898. On November 9, 1898, over 1,000 white citizens gathered in Italian Hall, in which the leaders of the conspiracy announced their intention to oust the elected municipal government. 454 men then signed the White Declaration of Independence, which proclaimed that the framers of the United States had a United States Constitution. Okay, so we talked about that. And the other letter, um, and we talked about how they said they ain't going to be led by no African men of African origin. Um, so this declaration in ultimatum was delivered to color committees made up of 25 black leaders who were given until 8 a.m. the next morning to reply, child, shut your mouth, baby. Now, let's go to another source. <sighs> mm -mm -mm. Commencing, commemorating Wilmington's racial violence of 1898 from individual to collective memory. Ciao. Mm -mm -mm. Scholars do not dispute the essential fact about the racial, racial violence that occurred in Wilmington, North Carolina, more than a hundred years ago. Although interpretations of the event by the city's current residents reflect the racial divide that is their common heritage, on November 10th, 1898, an armed mob of whites led by some, Wilming, some of Wilmington's most respected and influential citizens, destroyed the state's only daily African-American newspaper by burning the building in which it was housed. So that's what they showing you. Let me go back one. Oh, shoot. I got to go back again. Oh, shoot. It was one of these pictures, fam. Oh, shoot. I was hoping I could show you. Um, oh, it was probably this one. That's what they showing you here. They burnt that so-and-so to the ground. Almost to the ground anyway. All right. Um, da -da 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 -da. they then turned their fury and guns on the city's black population taking out at least nine blacks, according to contemporary white press scores, according to the oral tradition within the African-American community. The mob then drove others, perhaps hundreds of men, women, and children from their homes into surrounding swamps in search of safety. Over the next two days, while Wilmington's black citizens unsuccessfully appealed to the federal government for protection, Groups of armed whites forcefully expelled from the city, both black and white political and business leaders opposed to conserva conservative Democrat rule and white supremacy. Led by the city's white elite, armed whites used the threat of parry military forces to remove from office Wilmington's duly elected Biracial city government. Oh, shoot, I can't highlight that. Replacing it with representatives of the old elite and which had been called the only successful coup d'etat in the United States. Baby clutching my pearls. Nor is there significant disagreement within the scholarly community over the reason for Wilmington's racial violence. In 1894, North Carolina's large and aggressive populist party fused with the Republicans to capture control of the state's legislature. This fusionist majority rewrote the state's election laws, significantly increasing 
black participation in state and local politics for the first time since Reconstruction. As a result, the Republicans elected Daniel Russell of Wilmington governor in 1896, and the fusionists retained control of the state's legislature while winning control of a number of of municipal governments, including Wilmington's. This challenge of bourbon Democrat control of North Carolina politics led to a furious, highly emotional Democratic counterattack in 1898, one based largely on an appeal to white voters' fear of Negro dominance orchestrated by um, Fernifo M. Simmons of New Bern, State Democratic Party Chairman, and jo- Josephus Daniels, editor of the Raleigh News and Observer, the state's most influential Democratic newspaper, the campaign employed Wilmington as a symbol of Negro dominance, domination. Wilmington was a logical choice since by 1898, the city had a black majority with a large and rapidly expanding middle class. Let me run that back. A logical choice since by 1898, the city had a black majority with a large and rapidly expanding middle class and blacks served in both the municipal government and civil services. The efforts of one member of Wilmington's black middle class to refute democratic charges ensured that Wilmington would remain at the eye of the storm of the the 1898 campaign. The Democrats' sexually charged racial rhetoric drew a response from Alexander Manley, editor of the Wilmington Daily Record, the state's only black daily. Refuting the black R-word charges of the Democratic press, Manley asserted that many blacks charged with R were in reality discovered in consensual relationships and suggested that white men be more protective of their women against sexual advances from males of all races. Manley's editorial was carried daily by Wilmington's Democratic Press in a successful effort to inflame white voters' fear, fears in preparation for the November 8th election. His editorial and the white Democrats' respond to it provided the spark that ignited the white mob violence against the city blacks following the election. So this is a snippet. Now, before I read the snippet, let's go back uh, to the respond. Because remember we read the white man's declaration. We ain't finna be up under your, you people of African origin. We ain't finna be up under your rule. It's been 30 years. You then basically took all the jobs. You gave all the labor jobs to the blacks. How are the white men supposed to be making a living? And the city ain't growing because of it. We not taking this crap anymore. And we don't appreciate what you wrote up in your paper, you got so many hours to go on and pack up and move out of town or it's on and popping. This is the reply of the com- color committee to the white declaration of independence. We, the color citizens to whom was referred the matter of expulsion from this community of the person and press of A.M. Manley beg most respectfully to say that we are in no wise responsible for, nor in any way endorse the obnoxious article that call forth your activities. Neither are we authorized to act for him in this manner, but in the interest of peace, we will most willingly use our influence to have your wishes carried out. 
Okay, so I want y'all to keep in mind, this was their response to this white declaration of independence. Okay? Now, nowhere in this response did it say you lying through your so-and-so teeth about the jobs. I, I don't see that in that response. It didn't even lie about the actual article. So here's a snippet from that article. Now, this is Alexander Manley, editor of Wilmington's Daily Record, North Carolina's only black daily in 1898, said that many blacks charged with R merely had engaged in consensual relationships and he suggested that white men protect their women better against sexually advances from all men. Now, folks can take that how they want. They could take that as face value. And now he's supposed to be a black man too. Peep game on that. Obviously, you can see clear as day he's mixed. Okay, or back in the day, they would have called him mulatto. Okay, you can see he's clear as day mixed. But he was labeled as a black man. So now, if this was all propaganda on the white population, that black men were aring white women why did the color committee bow down why did they bow down and say look we ain't got nothing to do with that we ain't responsible for that and matter of fact yeah we gonna give him up Okay, so um, Wilmington's 1898 racial violence represents an egregious example of means, okay, oh, they had that same picture in there, by which white Southern disenfranchised and imposed a strict form of racial segregation upon its black population at the turn of the century. The region maintained the system of Jim Crow through a variety of mechanisms, but primarily through the use of or threat of violence, including state-sponsored violence, until well into the seventh decade and the 20th century. In addition to violence, segregation was also supported. In addition to violence, segregation was also supported by a mythic past consciously created by South dominant white society and successfully incorporated into the national consciousness. Black protesters against the system were essentially ignored even at the national level, largely because white America shared the racist beliefs that undergirded both de jure segregation at the white South's version of the past. Family, just like I've been telling you all, just like the his, the true historical receipts show that whites started taking the seat of power after the Civil War. Okay? I said mid-1800s, late 1800s. All of this jumped off at 1898. So what I am saying to you is this is one of the events that ushered in taking out the old regime of the black leaders slash black European leaders to, to, to be precise, precise, the black European leaders and putting white folks in its place or in their place, okay? 
And we all know that them Jim Crow laws ran a lot of melanated people out of the South. So they're telling you when the Jim Crow stuff started to kick in. Okay? Okay? All right, uh, so let me see if I want to read any more of this. White awakening to the realities of race. Although African Americans had begun to openly challenge segregation by the end of the Second World, uh, World War, especially through the increasingly responsive judicial and executive branches of the federal gov government, Southern whites remained devoted to the system. Only a relatively few white Southerners, primarily intellectuals and academics, were willing to question publicly either segregation or the mythic past that supported it. Okay, uh, so I'm not going to go into that because we we know all of that all of that part. Okay, um, so <sighs> chow, folks can take this for what they want. All I can give you is again. Uh, this article is legit. This is the white declaration. And in this declaration, the main thing wasn't about, oh boy, being slick at the mouth in this paper. Because that's what they want you to believe in mainstream media and even here. That the beef was really about, oh boy, being slick at the mouth about uh, the R word. And no, ain't nobody being R'd. It's white women are willingly laying up and swirling with melanated and mulatto men. That uh, was just the icing on the cake. Because the real beef was the white population saying we're not going to be ruled by these black folks no more because we can't feed our families. All of the jobs and stuff are going to Negro laborers. And I find it very, very interesting Within this article, they pointed out a population of African origin, but then down here said employment going to Negro laborers. Hmm. Really now? Sips water, sips water. So again, fam, you could take this for what it's worth. You could take it for what they say. That now, you know, this was a campaign to say that melanated men were aring Caucasian women. Or you can take it as, no, it, it was really bigger than that. This is about the, con the constructs of a power switch over from a melanated black European rule, elite rule, and turning it over to white folks. And it would not surprise me that the event of old boy Manly putting out this inflammatory stuff, saying ain't nobody are in your women. It would not surprise me if he was told to do this to let that be the icing on the cake to start these racial riots. So, like I told y'all years ago, when we started finding out about Black European rulers, and we talked about um, the place that was... Um, <clears throat> bomb Black Wall Street. When we talked about that, I told y'all, I got a funny suspicion that white folks went in there to bomb that, use that as an opportunity to bomb that, to snuff out the rest of 
the wealthy black Europeans. Because it, their perspective was, you'll never get a chance to rule again. So this is making me look at all of those uprisings that happen in the South in these predict particular areas and some Northern routes that it was more about a reset. Let me back that up for the slow ones in the back that those riots were more about a reset of switching out the power structure from black rulership to white rulership, All right? Now that's just my take on it, just putting together the pieces on this events that we have to dig up. Because I'm not so I'm sure people in North Carolina probably heard about this Wilmington's racial violence. But I know many ain't read through this white declaration of independence. And if you did, I don't know how you skipped over all that part about the rulership and an employment and this, that, and the third. And I don't know how you skipped over the response to the, uh, the the white declaration, white men saying, you better uh, tell old boy to pack up his stuff and he better get up out of here now. I, I don't, how could you skip over the fact that not only did they respond, they agreed with what he said, uh, what um, A.M. Manley said was disrespectful and vile. Yeah, all, all of this part. So something ain't adding up. Okay? The official story they are telling you is not adding up. Not whatsoever. All right, so that's all I have on this family. Um, I will drop a link in the description of the vid with these sources, of course. Whew, child, but shout out to sis, um, Brooklyn Bourgie. I didn't expect that on this white declaration. And I, I'm like, no, nah, let me, somebody had to hoax this up. Somebody hoax this. this, this ain't real. And I had to dig to come up with this little article. I had to dig to come up with the actual news clipping. Child, I just really can't. And, and then I had to go to one of my other sources to come up with what blood actually said. So this goes back to the bigger discussion that I was having being long-winded in my anti-scarf moment on the live last night when I talk about the role of a man to provide and protect. These white men weren't having it. You said, what about white women? They weren't having it. Whether or not it was true or not, they were not having it. They burnt that so-and-so to the ground. Not to the ground. But they sure burnt them out. So something's not adding up, fam. Something's not adding up. Because they actually follow protocol, printed it in the paper, and told them, you better pack your stuff and get the blank on. So it ain't like they even just went in there with guns and, and burning a blazing. Not only did they give them a warning what was going to jump off, the colored committee responded back saying, you know what, you right. We uh, Wash the hands, wash the hands. We ain't got nothing to do with what blood and set up here and said. We don't condone that vi vileness.
and they still went in on their behinds. So that's all I have on this family. Uh, of course, you can take it in whatever perspective that you want to take it in. I find it highly, highly interesting. And I think that this was all orchestrated for a reset of changing of leadership from that black European elite to whites. So that's my take on it and my perspective. So uh, thank you for listening to this. If you are not subscribed to us, um, I highly encourage you to subscribe, share this video and like the vid. I wish everyone well on this Friday. This is Rhonda with WTUZ Radio Podcast. Peace and love, fam. What?